Alrighty, so for week nine, your first part of section eight, I'm actually going to do this additional video for the code up work because there are a couple things in here that I think just need a little more clarification. And as I was reading through the readme file, or in this case, the markdown file, I wanted to just briefly go over them. So you can either kind of watch this as I cover the topics based on the video that you're on, right? Or you can watch it through and come back later and do that. So I'm going to link this video, but I will talk about it in attendance so you know where to find it, but I will link it right here at the top. Uh, so when you get here, you'll see that link. But again, I'll, I'll mention it. So one of the first things about this section you learn about, uh, which is how to handle saving things in a persistent uh, storage, because all this time we've been using uh, basically our system storage, which we know is volatile, which if you refresh the page, it will go away. So we're moving that to uh, persistent by local storage. So I have the to do app open. And one of the things I want to show you, because this looks a little different than Andrew's page, and I just want to show you where to find it, because we've spent most of our time hanging out here on the sources page. And right next to it is the application. Now, right now, there's nothing in local storage because I cleared it before I ran this because I just wanted to walk you through what this looks like. So for the to-do app, it looks a little different than the notes app, but conceptually, we're still just saving into local storage. So when I add something like coding and I hit add to do, okay, what happens here, and maybe I'll increase the size a little bit so you can see this. And I'm not sure why it's not. Oh, there we go. So what ha again, I'm a, an application and here is the item. We'll talk about this, some of the stuff that shows up that you haven't maybe learned about yet, but that is local storage. And it is just good to know how to find it. It is good no to know how to clear it. So like I could clear this out. I could actually d go in here and I could change things in here in the fly. You got to be a little careful about that, especially as we move into the UUID. So that's one thing. For sure, you want to know how to find it, know how to clear it, know how to look at it uh, when you're doing this part of the work, okay? And I talk about that here uh, as far as viewing local storage. And also, uh, I noticed that when uh, we he was removing items in code, it didn't work. I ended up having to use window.localStorage. And I think I read that it was becoming, and if you've ever heard this word, deprecated, meaning, you know, it's probably going to be moved uh, or removed by a newer method. Okay. Now, the other thing here, and this is definitely what, and I talk about this a little more here, but understanding this code is so important. So going back to sources now, I definitely recommend as you watch each of these videos, because here's here's my heads up about this, besides all the <laughs> writing I, I did here, is that everything you're learning here, you will be implementing in your own way, in your own code for Dev1. The idea of getting user input, storing it to local storage, rendering it back. Now, the difference is, um, well, first, let me just say, walk through this code, right? So remember setting. Now, I'm going to, I set the breakpoint at the beginning because I would actually want to see uh, in real time what this get save to do is. And again, this might be a little later, but this is where once you get the user input, then you're processing it. And so if I refresh the page here and I hit step into, again, some of you, you know, make sure you know how to do this piece. If I step into this, it's going to run, it's going to, because this is the other thing you're doing this time is you're actually creating a, a, a folder or a file just for your functions. So in this case, we're going to call here and this idea of parsing, okay, and stringifying. Uh, because what we're, in this idea of J uh, JSON, these three concepts, JSON is just a way, and not just JavaScript, but other programming languages used to move or format data and then move it across the web. It is very common. So understanding or at least having some introduction to J uh, JSON is good. And these methods are basically just making it so that we can have the data inside of local storage in the way that it needs it the data to be, and then and along the way, you're getting introduced to JSON, okay?
So the one, again, stepping through this and looking at what comes out, because right now what it's basically doing is going out to get the item. And then there it is, right? And, and in this case, it's saying, hey, if you found anything that I want you to return parsing that. So we're doing, in this case, when we save it, we stringify it, which basically just means we're putting quotes around everything that's not a number. Okay, so if it's, it's a string, the key and the value, but if the value is a number, it won't have the um, uh, quotes around it, but everything else will. And that's really what JSON is. Okay, so again, I recommend stepping through this code, watching what happens, way, way important. Okay, um, so, and here I talk about this concept coming back here. And let me just show you the uh, drawer real quick. So one thing I, I try to help you understand is that once you save something into local storage, right, it now exists in two places. It exists in your system, right? So if I do to-dos here, right, what is it to-dos? Or is it just to-do? Oh, I haven't returned it yet. <laughs> so I got to return it for it to have anything. There we go. Because what happens is if there's nothing in there, there's nothing to return. But if I come here, up arrow. And what I see here is that this is the data as it's stored in my system, my what you might think of as your RAM, uh, okay? But it is, once you run the code to update your local storage, it is also in local storage. So it exists in two places, and then when you, when you get user input, then you're saving that, okay? So one way to see this is we can see that it exists here, and if we come over here, we can see it exists here and we might be tempted to think it's the same thing, but it's not. And that's important. And actually you can see the stringified version here. Okay, so take a moment as you're going through this to make sure you have that concept down, okay? Or at least enough, right? So, and here's the other thing I, I tell you is that I want you to create a readme file for the notes just so that you understand that it is, it is stored in two different locations. So I want you to do that and then you get a few points for doing that. Now on, um, on 64, then one, two, three, three, three. yeah, this is kind of what I was saying before. So maybe a little ahead of time, making sure you're walking through that code to understand it. And now, like I've done kind of in some of the other steps, uh, besides telling you, right, um, and on 66, you don't have to do any coding, but I definitely think it's good just to see another way. I think uh, the way I've shown you is better, but I, you know, who cares as long as you use it. Take a break. Now, after this, you're going to get in, you're going to get uh, introduced to the UUID. And I'm just going to give you a heads up here. I gave you some content. The UUID is uh, you, uh, you're using, now we're actually for the first time in this class using somebody else's code. And I've had problems in the past with students trying to use what Andrew talks about in the course. So here's what I recommend that I show you the script, but I also want to show you the actual, uh, what how I did it. So what I did is I went to that uh, folder. I went to that link that I gave you here. And in this link, uh, you might think this is the only code, but it's actually really, really long, right? So you could just select the whole thing, right? There's a couple of ways to do it, but select the whole thing and then create this file locally, okay? And that's what I did, is I created it. Now, I also put it in the root of my private repo, or sorry, on my JSA, uh, JS Bootcamp folder. And the reason I put it there and by the way, it's minified out on the link. And when it comes locally, when I copied it, it's not minified. It's not, and minified just means it gets rid of all the space. So don't worry about it if it looks a little different. The point is then you can use it in both your notes and your to-do app or anywhere else you'll need it, uh, which is pretty much what we're going to need it for going forward. And then for those two applications, what you can do here is just here is the reference. Um, once you get to organizing that other file and that's a UUID and I just show you what I said in the write-up is that it backs it up one directory to point to uh, a directory higher up in the structure. And that's nice because you can see, use that same reference in the to-do, okay? Okay, I thought that might help to give you that visual and now let's go back to here. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so, um, right, so this section, I'm, I'm going to emphasize this again, is such an important section because everything you learn here is basically going to be you uh, 
doing this for your own app idea. But the thing I want to leave you with understanding here is that Andrew, when he runs his to do in his notes, he is actually only storing just what the input was. We are in our applications and in our learn together actually processing the input data and creating a different output and you're going to see me talk about this when i do the learn together this week to help you understand that that is the big difference you know he's just and not just it's a good thing because it's understanding those fundamentals of how to get user input and then present it back on the screen but we are doing the additional step of not just getting it but determining let's say our decision right and then outputting that decision something about it and you will see in my example how i'm trying to help you understand that you know you may get like you know different kinds of data from the user to help you make that decision but then once you present it back it may look very different but i just want you to kind of have that in your head as we move forward okay i hope this helped let me know if it did in your submission have a good one bye